You are tuning into Mad Genius Lab, and you better stick around because I've got Food & Wine's executive wine editor, Ray Isle, here, because he's making champagne cocktails. That's right. <laughs> if I can get the thing open, I am. There we go. All right. Good morning, everybody. My name is Justin Chappell. I'm Food & Wine's culinary director, and I am your host every Thursday morning right here on Mad Genius Live. Welcome to the show. Um, we are a live show all over the internet. Uh, and so you can interact with us. You can talk to us. You can write questions. Um, you could tag us in your beautiful photos on Instagram. Um, and to that point, I want to throw up an image that I want to give a shout out to um, Abby Hawking, who is Food & Wine's uh, digital photo editor, because last week she made the uh, pasta with sausage uh, recipe at home, except she made it vegetarian. So she took out the sausage. She made the pasta. She took a really beautiful picture. She posted it on Instagram. And she hashtagged Mad Genius Live. So if you're watching and you want to get a shout out on the show next week, be sure and tag us in all of your Instagram photos um, all across social media. Um, I want to introduce you to Ray Isle, everybody. Ray Isle is uh, Food and Wine's executive wine editor. That's right. He is the wine of Food and Wine. And this is the first time he's on the show, yep. so I'm very happy to have you. But Ray is not shy to the camera because he does a lot of television. I mean, you're on the Today Show all the time. Today Show, um, to, uh, On the Money on CNBC, various other things. Um, he's usually talking about wine, sometimes talking about cocktails, sometimes, you know. Or talking about current events in the wine industry. Current events in the wine industry. Um, yeah. Ray is like BFFs with Kathy Lee and Hoda. They are, they are wonderful people. <laughs> I like them. Oh. I like them a lot. <laughs> you hear that, Kathy Lee and Hoda? Watch the watching. show. <laughs> I think I, it's, I'm not sure they're watching. Oh, yeah, because you know? some, something tells the me they have a show happening right now. Right now, yeah. yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Um, oh. But because he's not on Kathy Lee and Hoda today, he's on Mad Genius Live with yeah. Justin Chapel, and we are doing all things wine because the Food and Wine April issue, which is on newsstands now, is all about the wine. It is wine, 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 and a little bit of other stuff. Like so, some food. There is some food, and there are some recipes, which we're going to show you today. And I just want to show you a really fun story that we did in the April issue of Food & Wine. It's called What's Your Wine America? And it features our very own Ray Isle looking adorable. <laughs> we should have we should have got the we should have got the JPEGs of this so I could show you how cool Ray is. Here he is. If you want to do a close-up of it, that. It's very strange to be on camera and on the magazine at the oh, same oh, time. It's like one of the um. it's like one of those things when you put the mirror up against the mirror and it just it's, it's like infinity. Like endless reflecting images yeah. of, of Look me. at Ray. Here he is yeah. in the wine store. So yeah. anyways, it's a really great article. Tell us what is the article about? So the article basically I went and I am kind of embed it's not like embedding yourself in, in Iraq, but I embedded myself in some wine stores around the country. Um, to work several days selling wine to people and not let them know that I was a journalist. Um, and really just to find out what people are buying and why they're buying it and you know what people what questions people really have about wine and what they love and don't love. And so it's and when I and I kind of consolidated it all into a bunch of tips about how to you know how to get the best out of a wine store, how to get you know how to get the wines you want and not get the wines you don't want, how yeah. to save money, um, how to you know how to find out information about wine, and it was a lot of fun. I mean, it's it was it was a lot of fun to watch. I mean, I, I got to experience it before it hit the newsstands because we talked a lot about it in the office. But it's a really great article. Check it out. It's in Food and Wine's April issue. Um, it's really servicey. I, I hate to use that word, but you will take you there are some key takeaways in there. Yeah, they're actual tips. It's it's not yeah. just it's not just me walking around wine stores being like, hey, I'm in a wine <laughs> store. This is so much fun. <laughs> so it's really cool. Um, all right, so not only are, do we have Ray to talk about the article, but he's going to make some champagne cocktails for us in just a minute. Yep. Um, but we're also doing everything with wine today. So we're making two recipes from the April issue that happen to be my recipes. Um, they're really fun dessert recipes that incorporate wine. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make my Riesling Patefui, yes. um, which if you're unfamiliar with that, it's basically a gummy. Right. It's right? a big old gummy. It's a it's big old gummy. not shaped like a bear. No. It's not a gummy bear. Yeah. It's a Patefui, which is a delicious yummy candy, and the cool thing about it is I, for whatever reason, cannot open this bottle of wine. It's, and it's a screw top, I so. <laughs> I, I, this is what I do for a living. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna let you measure out a cup of wine, put it in here, and then you're gonna actually put four packets of unflavored gelatin. Obviously, you get these pretty much anywhere nowadays. Don't be afraid of it. It's a really um, easy thing to use. There's instructions on the book, uh, on the back of it. But of course, because we have a recipe, 
you can just follow that. So Ray has a cup of Riesling. And this, and is, this is dry Riesling, This right? is, a, yes, yeah. sorry. So you, people, people might, real, a lot of people assume that all Riesling is sweet. And in fact, there's some really great dry Riesling out there that's not sweet. It's, um, and, and yeah. for this recipe, it's terrific, but it's also just a great, you know, a great wine to go with. To just drink, anything. yeah. Yeah, yeah um, I actually, I prefer dry Riesling over, you know, the sweeter Rieslings. And um, the reason we're using a dry Riesling here is because I really want to control the level of sweetness in the candy. So by, by using the drier Riesling, I'm able to ensure that the recipe will be more consistently flavored no matter who cooks it. So just make sure you're gonna go for dry Riesling. So let me show you this mixture here. So the first thing I did, um, I have a few swaps here because we wanna make sure that you can see the whole recipe, but so in this saucepan here, I've combined another cup of dry Riesling. I can stir this, but only with yes, my fingers at the moment. Only with your fingers. So I'm gonna give you <laughs> a little spoon. And you actually just, you don't really need to stir it too much, just like kind of spread it out so that it gets moist. There you go. And now let that sit. So we have a cup of wine, dry Riesling, combined even, with four I don't packets. Even need to like... No, you just leave it. Wow. There you go. That's weird. <laughs> Hopefully it'll that dissolve. That looks appetizing. <laughs> Hopefully it'll <laughs> dissolve. So there's a cup of Riesling, four envelopes of um, unflavored gelatin, just let that hang out for five, five minutes. So in here I have another cup of dry Riesling, and then I have apricots and sugar. I have, I'm gonna cheat because I can't remember my quantities, so I had this lovely printed, really large font that Kelsey, our test kitchen manager, printed for me because she was so helpful. Um, so it's a cup and a half. It's missing the sugar amount. <laughs> it's one and a half cups of sugar so, and eight ounces of um, dried apricots. I just want to show you the two different kinds of dried apricots you'll see here. So these are Turkish apricots and then these are California ones. I like to use the California ones because they have a really, really strong apricot flavor. I'm going to let you taste that. Thanks. Are these, un are these unsulfured or sulfured? I have no idea. Mm. Some are people they? worry about this. <laughs> but, I have no idea. You could probably oh, right. you could probably get them sulfured and unsulfured, but so the Turkish ones are don't, to me they're not as tart. They're a little they taste a little more just sweet like candy, um, whereas the California ones have a it really strong taste like California sunshine. Doesn't it? <laughs> it's delicious. I mean, that's pretty good. Yeah. All right, so I've just warmed that up in a saucepan, and now I'm adding it to a food processor. Well, I warmed it up just until the sugar dissolves, and then I let it hang out for ten minutes to soften to kind of rehydrate the dried apricots. I'm gonna move this out of the way. And then I'm gonna puree it in a food processor until it's as smooth as you could get it. Um, this is the action sequence. <laughs> this is the action <laughs> today. We, we're, we're pureeing and I'm just gonna let yeah, that go. It's just pureeing <laughs> like crazy. Yeah. And in the meantime, what I'm gonna do really quickly is I'm just going to coat um, my eight inch square baking pan with just a little canola oil like that. And then I'm going to line it with parchment paper. So what I like to do is just kind of measure that it's like that. So you kind of know how big it is or how big you need. Save this because you'll use it later. Let me just check this. Can you, I don't even know if people can hear me over that thing, but I'm assuming they can. I'm assuming you can hear me. Um, and so I'm just gonna line it with parchment. This is so you can get the candy out when it's done. And this so is the, so actually a really simple recipe. The parchment recipe. doesn't actually need to, you don't like to line it on both sides or anything. No, you just kind of use it so it's, so you have little handles to like lift it out of the pan. Cool. And really, this is almost it. Because then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your, I moved my pan and I need it again. So if anybody gonna, didn't believe this is live. <laughs> it's clearly live. It's clearly <laughs> live. Because we get that every week. I know we were telling you that before. I know, it's, uh, I mean, we the were, show. Apparently. We're live. I know I'm alive. I can feel my heart beating at the moment. So. <laughs> You're alive, and we are live on Mad Genius Live. We're Mad How about Genius that? Live. It's just live. This is like totally live, mild, mind-blowingly live. And okay, so I'm gonna add this back to the saucepan. You look at this. So you have a beautiful apricot puree, and I don't actually strain this because I like all the little flecks of orange that you get from the apricots. And then what you do, and I'm kind of rushing this a little bit because I want to make sure that we get to it, but get to it all. But um, then you take your gelatin, so the one cup of dry Riesling, right. the four things of gelatin, and you add it right into your apricot puree. Now, I don't think it was quite five minutes, so the gelatin actually needed to um, dissolve a little bit more, but right. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do this anyways, oops. And then you bring it to a simmer, which might take a minute. And by the time it comes to a simmer, you're just gonna 
can you kind of simmer it just enough to melt the gelatin? So and you so you don't burn it to a rolling rolling boil or anything. You just want it to a light simmer. Yeah, just like a light simmer. I'm like making an insane mess over here. I got sugar everywhere. So hey, the kitchen. <laughs> Details. I've got sugar everywhere, and I need to use this burner again. So. While that comes to a simmer, I'm gonna actually show you what this looks like so that we don't waste time. So, oh, there it goes. Because this is really all you do. So you soften your gelatin, you right. make your puree, your puree, you mix them together, you cook this until the gelatin is fully dissolved, which as you can see, it is it's not. not. <laughs> I, know, I, know, I feel but like it'll I failed get there. on the gelatin step here. It's, uh, you know, I have one thing to do. Um. No, 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 no. <laughs> you actually need the, you need the, once it kind of softens in the liquid, which in this case was the wine, then you still need to kind of heat it in order to activate it. Right. So, which is what we're doing here, and it's fine. You can already see it's starting to fall apart. Um, so once that comes to a simmer and you get the gelatin to fully dissolve, you literally just pour it into your prepared pan. So in this case, it's an eight inch square pan. And then you let it cool completely, and then you pop it in the refrigerator. Actually, Ray, will you grab the swap yeah. pat fouille right out of the fridge there? Which is, as I mentioned, pat de fouille is basically, it's a French candy, it's a, gel, a gummy, um, a gelatin. Um, there you go, and so I'm gonna continue to dissolve this, but you wanna like, kinda lift that out? Here. There ah, you go. It's a giant. It's a giant it's jelly. jelly. It's a giant <laughs> jelly. We have created a giant jelly. It's a pat de fouille. It's a pat de fouille. All right. Can I eat some? This. Yeah, let's cut it. So, because this needs to simmer for a minute, basically you transfer it to your pan, cool it down, put it in the refrigerator until it's nice and fully set, and then you get this incredible, oh, I did take out a big knife. Yeah, that works better. <laughs> Here, take this, put some sugar in there, because the thing about gummies, specifically pat de fouille, because they're really sticky, is you kind of need to coat them into something to prevent them from sticking together. So you just take a, a nice sharp knife, you cut it up like this, and of course, you're watching this live, so if you have any questions about gummies, if you have any questions about pate de fouille, if you ever made it before, if you ever had any issues, hit us up. But also, I know we're, um, the, this recipe is in the April issue of Food and Wine, but it's also um, in the links, if you're on, uh, in the comments if you're on Facebook. So, I'm having trouble sure to toss, doing toss it with the sugar? Yes, so then, you need more sugar. Ah. There you go. Ah, there we go. That's, <laughs> lots that's of sugar. what we like. So basically, lots and lots of sugar. Basically, the sugar, just prevents it from sticking, that's it. But it also gives it a little sweetness. Um, actually, when we tested this recipe and we developed it, it wasn't quite sweet enough, but then David and Kelsey, who work in the test kitchen here with me, were like, yeah, but you're gonna toss it in sugar, so don't worry about it, because you're gonna get, and you don't want it to be too, too sweet anyways. And then okay. you end up with this nice, nice little in, sugar in, pat de fouille. In an attempt to go a little bit quicker, I'm just gonna show you, even though I didn't get this fully dissolved yet. So you basically transfer it right in here, just like that. You let it cool completely because you don't want to put it in the refrigerator when it's hot, and then once it's cooled completely, you just put it right into the refrigerator, cover it with plastic, and let it go until it's fully set, and then you end up getting, I'm gonna bring you a beautiful plate here. Oh my God, look at that. I decided Hooray. it was time for a pate de fouille ziggurat. I didn't even notice. <laughs> look at this. How cute is that? Can we get a close-up of that? Ray built a pate de fouille pyramid, uh, it's, I, if uh, you will. It's, it's what one does. You know? <laughs> I went, when in doubt, build a pate de fouille pyramid. There you go. It's like a whole new thing. You could do this all over your table, you know, if you were kind of slightly <laughs> Let mental. Me see if I could go one more high. I think you can go as high as you want there. All right. I think I might have, I would have done a little bit better of a job cutting these into perfect squares, but <laughs> I you. love, <laughs> no, I, lo I actually love how irregular they are. <laughs> all right, so this is the Riesling Pat de Fouille that you can find in the April issue, or you can get it uh, in the comments below. And I think we should try it. I think we should try it too. I mean, that good. It's delicious. Tastes like apricot. It tastes like it's apricot. Not, it's not insanely sweet. No. Um, mm -mm. Which is kind of cool. Could you do? Could you do that with a little liqueur or something in there? Totally. I. You know. I because the riesling. Um, you you get the riesling like it's definitely there. Right. Especially if you eat like three or four of them, which I've done. Um, but I didn't want to add another liqueur to it because specifically for this one because I I wanted to still have that riesling right. flavor. Right. Um, but it's a really fun way of cooking with wine, in my opinion. Um, and I'm very happy with the recipe, so I hope you cook it at home. Okay, so before we get on to my other recipe, which it happens to be a delicious chocolate cake, right. we're gonna go into cocktails, because Ray has, what do you have for us? Well, I have two cocktails, um, both of which are, um, can somebody throw me a towel? Towel, we need towels. <laughs> um, I just need a towel. 
A clean one. Thank you. I'd like a <laughs> towel too. All right. I, I, anyway, but <laughs> we're doing some champagne cocktails. First thing I should say is, you know, you don't actually have to use actual champagne from Champagne in France. You can use California sparkling wine. Um, you know, champagne's expensive. Champagne will run you 35 bucks a bottle. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> Ray's a little bit better at me at, at sports. Yeah, but apparently. I'm not so good at cutting pate of uh, whatever. Pate fui. Pate fui. Pate fui. <laughs> okay. Um, so you don't have to use champagne, champagne. You can use California sparkling wine. You mm -hmm. could use Prosecco, though it tends to be a little bit sweeter. Um, in this case, we're using a J Cuvée 20, which is about a conveniently about a 20 buck bottle of wine. Um, when you're making cocktails, you don't really want to use a 100 buck bottle of sparkling wine because no. you're just going to dilute it anyway. Yeah. So, so you're saying don't use like the Dom Perignon for this recipe. Don't use the Dom Perignon <laughs> in your champagne cocktails unless you just want to point out like how you just don't care. Yes. You know. <laughs> so, or if you're like, I just don't care because I just have enough money to. Yeah. To have just Dom Perignon pour Dom Perignon into right. my orange juice. Um, <laughs> so yeah. uh, let's get started here. Yeah, so, so we're, we're going to make a what? A couple of cocktails. One's called a Rouge 75. These are both, by the way, these are both off of our um, sort of you know cocktail archive on the right. on the website. We have hundreds of cocktails on the website if people are interested. Um, one's called a Rouge 75. One's called Cork County Bubbles. Okay. Um, they're both online. Um, but the Rouge 75 is the first one. And what we're going to do is um, first we're going to little muddle up a little bit of orange twists. Um, that was too many. That was too twists. many. <laughs> we don't, we don't, I only want four. Once again, we're cheating. Yeah. We have the recipe um, in big letters here so that we remember the quantities. Yeah. Four raspberries, a um, little bit of muddling. You know, um, we're going to do simple, simple syrup in with the muddling. Um, two ounces of simple. So you've got in this so, so far you've got um, some orange twists. You got four orange twists. You have got um, about four raspberries. You're adding two ounces of simple syrup, which uh, if you're not aware of what that is, it's just sugar water. So equal parts yeah. sugar water. Bring them to a boil until it's dissolved. Let it cool. And we've got a muddler right here. Nice. This is actually made for muddling. Um, but you can use you know I've used the back of like the back end of a of a big um, cooking Wooden spoon. spoon. Yeah, you know that works well. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have one here. Know, These are kind of those thin, are a little yeah. thin, but. You can, if you have one with a thicker handle, which I like better for cooking. Or even anyway, a whisk. Like a whisk. The bottom of a whisk. Anything that'll kind of, anything that'll kind of crush the fruit and get the oils out of the, out of the, um, out of the, out of the fruit peel, because mm -hmm. um, you want that, you want that sort of slight bitterness and sweetness that you're going to get yeah. together here. Um, I'll help you with the gin. So, and then cocktail shaker, right? Yep. Simple syrup. We need some ice. You add the ice, I'll add the gin. So we're adding three ounces of just dry gin. Normally I wouldn't do this with my hands, but I'm gonna do it with my hands. It's just you and me, so I yeah. give you permission. I, it's okay, I was on the subway, I didn't wash my hands. You know, you'll be, you'll be fine. <laughs> he did wash his hands. I did wash my hands, it was a joke. <laughs> he did, oh, oh shoot. Well this is like oh me my cutting pedafoui. <laughs> I wish I had a straw. Um, <laughs> okay, so okay. yeah, so two ounces, add the ice and the gin, um, you shake it. You know, this, yeah, this is the fun part. <laughs> there are a lot of videos of me on foodwine.com shaking and, things, so. And then you strain like a regular into day for me. What, what were chilled <laughs> martini glasses. At least they were chilled when we started this thing. They were. They won't be chilled anymore if you spend your time making pâte fouille. I took too long making the uh, pâte fouille, exactly. So, so beautiful color. Really and beautiful. See if I got that about even. Yeah, you, you only left one garnish, Ray. I forget my garnish. Oh, I'll cut it in half. That's right. Um, we'll each have a garnish. Yeah, and then basically you you know you top with a little bit of the champagne. You obviously don't you don't put the champagne in the shaker because one, you might explode it. Um, two, <laughs> if, even if you don't you know blow the top off the shaker, you lose all the bubbles, which is part of the point. And then so you get here's yours. It's beautifully garnished. Um, beautifully garnished, you know, which is just a simple orange twist. Beautifully garnished if you don't drop it into the drink. That's all right. Oh, oh I broke it. mine. There you um, go. Anyway, <laughs> cheers. <laughs> cheers. Okay, cocktail number one. And oh my god, I'm like getting so nervous. That's called a Mmm, eleven o'clock cocktails, ladies. And that's see, that's a mm. that's a great. I mean, I would say that's really good. It's a great holiday drink. It isn't the holidays, but um, it's got, you know, it's got a kick because of the gin. But it, yeah. But you know, the wine actually doesn't have as much, nearly as much alcohol. So it's I'm going to try to rinse this thing. It's sweet, but it's not over the top sweet. And the bitterness from the orange peel kind of um, pulls back on the sweetness. And it's just a gorgeous drink too. Um, but it's also, I'm speaking all the way from over here across the kitchen, I think it has that beautiful pastel color. I mean, maybe you want to serve this on Easter. Yeah. It's coming um, up. You could serve it on Easter, that's right. Or you can, yeah. you can put you a can, pate de fouille garnish. You can garnish, you can garnish, with, garnish it with a pate de fouille. <laughs> 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 we 
there you go. That's that's what we were talking about. Okay, here, see, you know. this is what I wanted. I wanted to get like a Kathy Lee and Hoda moment going when I had this Ray is, on. Is, yeah, and this, this is, is apparently is what you get. Is, this is kind of what we do. You get Pat de Garni. <laughs> oh my God, that's Pat amazing. You're a poet. You didn't know it, as they say. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you didn't know it. Okay, what's okay. next? We're making Cork, Cork County, County bubbles. bubbles. Um, more ice. More ice. He doesn't care anymore. Well, no, this one, this one, <laughs> you know, it, it was easier to pour it in. Um, <laughs> hey, hey, was the, the drink good? The drink was the good. The drink is delicious. Yeah. Um, so this, this is an, another, you know, another um, kind of lovely champagne cocktail. Um, again. Champagne cocktail is its general term. And in fact, champagne the basic champagne cocktail is very simple. The, the classic champagne cocktail is champagne with a little bit of Angostura bitters and a little bit of sugar, and that's it. And that's like literally what yeah. it's called, champagne it's cocktail. It's called a champagne cocktail. Right. It sort of seems to have gotten its start kind of in the mid 1800s when the, um, ostensibly when the British were mourning the passing of Prince Albert, um, you know. I did uh, not know that. Do you have Prince Albert in a can? I you don't. You better let him out. <laughs> This right. classic stupid thing you call up on people on the phone and say, do you have Prince Albert in a can, which was a kind of canned tobacco, you know, and, uh, you know, call a store, do you have Prince Albert in a can? They're like, yes, we have Prince Albert in a can. Well, let him out. Um, Where, wait, okay, so we need to do a poll. If you're watching. I grew up in Texas. Please like, hit us up in the comments. Have you ever heard this joke before? <laughs> it's, it's a classic. <laughs> it's a classic. All right, we have one person in the room. Is there anybody watching what? who has heard this before? I'm not sure they make Prince Albert tobacco anymore. Anyway. Um, you know, right. uh, the same thing when Humphrey Bogart in Casablanca is, says, here's looking at you, kid, with a cocktail. That's oh, a yeah. champagne, champagne cocktail. Oh, there you go. So, so this, anyway. So we're not making the classic champagne cocktail. Yeah. We're making the Rouge 75, but which we have Well, here, Rouge 75 beautiful. and Cork County Bubbles, mm -hmm. called Cork County Bubbles because it involves Irish whiskey. Um, two ounces of Irish. In this case, we're using Jameson. We're using Jameson. Um, Funny story about, not to cut you off, funny story about Irish. I, I just did my 23 and Me yesterday, and I, apparently I'm 95% British and Irish. Go figure. I, get, I think I probably could have guessed that, but. I, you know, we're <laughs> on the same page. Whoa. Sorry. That's all right. What do you, oh, there you go. Half, a, <laughs> half an ounce of chartreuse. Definitely don't um, put a full ounce of chartreuse in two cocktails. Where's the name of this out of here? There you go. I'm supposed to have an ounce of fresh lemon juice. Here. Oh, there's a lemon there. Grab it. And I have a cutter. I mean, a squeezer yeah. here. This is the biggest lemon I've ever seen. Go ahead. This is, this is not a lemon. This here, is, this is like a, this is, know, a, this is like oh, a. Oh my God! It doesn't even fit in my. Here. Wait. Gin I have a new. No, I have a bigger one. I have a bigger one. Stay there. Stay no, there. Don't worry about it. Just squeeze it. Okay. One lemon. Generally, half a lemon is about. You know, if an ounce of fresh lemon juice, you probably get out of about. Um, about half a lemon. You don't have to worry about the seeds because you're going to use a strainer anyway. Um, Look at this. We're getting all so, sorts of cocktail tips from the and, wine guy. Um, two teaspoons of honey mixed with one teaspoon of water. We preset that. Um, and you do that because the, if you put the honey in anything cold, it's going to seize up. So yep. by diluting it in warm water, it prevents that. And then you basically shake it again. Again. More shaking. You thought you were making a mess. Look at I this. I know. This look, is at ridiculous. This. look at this mess over here. Um, so. It'll be one of those things I'll be like, should we have Ray back on the show? You should absolutely have me or back is on the show. Too messy. I bring the alcohol. Um, this is true. So Ray gets invited to all the parties. <laughs> look at this. What we're going to do. do you yep. see? Aren't you glad I'm holding it? Because if I wasn't holding it, it would have tipped over. Oh, oh ye of little faith. <laughs> Okay, and then we're gonna top with a little bit of champagne again. Le champagne, or in this case, in this California, case, California sparkling, sparkling wine. wine. J. Um, Not to be. Can you explain to everybody the difference between sparkling wine and champagne? Because I, I think I know the difference. There's a, it's a very simple answer. But for anyone basically, watching here, champagne, actual champagne, comes from the Champagne region in France, or northern France. Um, if it, if it's from any. Where else, it's sparkling wine. I mean, champagne right. is a form of sparkling wine, but champagne comes from champagne in France. Something like this J wine from California is made in the same way as champagne, same grape varieties. Um, it just comes from California instead. And there you go. In this Simple. case, it happens to be quite a bit less expensive. So, cheers. cheers. Another drink. This is the Cork County Bubbles. Mm. Much less sweet. Much less sweet. Um, drier drink. Ooh, I love this. Yeah. It's nice. You know, you mm. get... You get a little bit of the kind of the, the vanilla caramelization from the Irish whiskey um, from the barrels. You get um, the, the, the tartness and the brightness of the champagne and the lemon. 
Um, the honey, you know, you, you're not using very much honey. You've basically got a teaspoon of honey in each drink, and that's really the only sweetness you're looking at. So it's yeah. not a sweet drink. Um, it's a it's a it's a beautiful drink though. It's really it's good. so good. It's so. actually really beautiful. I mean, the color it's hard to it's hard to tell on camera, but it's yeah. really. The, the yellow hue is really beautiful. And it's, you know, it's especially nice when you garnish it with a pot de fruit as well. <laughs> it's just, you know, that's, that's really what you ought to do with any drink you have these days. So now um, I'm going to have to save all the extra pot de fruit I have. So nobody's eating it because it's going to be garnishes for life. Yeah. It's just, I mean. And that's really, really so that you can get your whiskey, it's a bit clumsy, your but <laughs> sparkling wine, and your Riesling all in one cocktail. Yep. Um, could, you, <laughs> could you also toss that with powdered sugar? You know, I wouldn't toss it with powdered sugar because powdered sugar has cornstarch in it, which could act as a, um, like, it could prevent the sticking, but it's just going to get absorbed into it because right. this is moist. So you'll end up with just with, like, with a, a, pasty, oh, like a pasty thing, yeah. Got it. All right, so here you have it. If you're just tuning Two. in to Mad Genius Live, follow us all over the internet using hashtag uh, Mad Genius Live. I have executive wine editor from Food & Wine Ray Isle here to not only cook two really fun desserts that incorporate wine, but to show us these two really awesome champagne cocktails, sparkling wine cocktails. Um, just to tell you what we've done, if you're just tuning in, we made a Rouge 75, which is raspberries and orange and champagne, a little bit of simple syrup, and then uh, we just made the Cork County Bubbles, which is whiskey, Irish whiskey in particular, yep. some lemon juice, yep. some sparkling wine. A little bit of honey. Really simple recipes. Yeah. Just, by the way, you, you left out the fact this has two ounces of gin in it, too. Oh, right. <laughs> That, it's, it's a that. little more lethal than it sounds initially, but um, but it's a it's a it's a delicious drink. So and so as I said, you know, out of the way. these cocktails are on the Food and Wine site. The recipes for them, um, and there's a lot of other cocktails on the site as well. We, I mean, we, we have hundreds of recipes, not just for recipes for food, but we have recipes right. for cocktails. I think we actually yeah. probably have like thousands of cocktail recipes. Yeah. I'm willing to bet because um, for many many years, Food and Wine put out a book called Cocktails. It was a cocktail book. Yep. Um, in addition to the wine guide that you've worked on, and. So we have all of those recipes from the cocktail books are on foodandwine.com. So get these, both these recipes on foodandwine.com or if you're watching us on Facebook, you get them in the comments. Um, let's make chocolate cake. Absolutely. We are gonna make- I have an egg. <laughs> you have an egg, because I so secretly passed along an egg to yes. Ray. Um, so we are also in the April issue. We have, I have, oh my God. Oh my God. I just dipped. <laughs> I just accidentally dipped our April issue in my pâte de fouille liquid. In which, in which Justin attempts to create pâte de fouille out of a magazine. <laughs> so if you're making pâte de fouille, just don't dip your magazine in. No, don't do before. that. Before, yeah. That was a problem. OK, so I was going to show you something from the magazine, but I think we just had the picture. They might want to throw it up again. We're making my red wine chocolate cake from yes. the April issue. It's, which is insanely delicious. It's so delicious. It's one of my favorite new recipes. It's one, of, In my opinion, it's probably one of the, my, the favorite the best recipes I've ever developed. It's really, really fun. It starts out with a really decadent cake. So we're gonna make that first. So you're, it's we have some sugar it here. It has one egg in it. It has one egg in it. <laughs> um, so go ahead and add the egg to the sugar and beat that really well. I have some other stuff over here that I'm gonna grab, including some butter. So while Ray beats the wet ingredients, I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing our dry. So I have flour here and for the exact quantities, just click the link if you're watching on Facebook to get the full recipe or get the April issue of Food & Wine. All the quantities are in there, but I'm just going to show you how easy this cake is. So we've got some all-purpose flour, some unsweetened cocoa powder. I just want to show you. I actually like to use this guitard um, cocoa powder. This is um, Coco Rouge, which is just like a really, really delicious, really intense, beautiful cocoa powder. It's unsweetened. But if all you have are you know the everyday stuff that you get at Mm -hmm. The big box grocery sure. store, that's yeah. fine too. But yeah. you want unsweetened cocoa powder. Or yes. Yeah. I need one more. Um, and this is just whisk until pale, I believe? Yes, so beat it really well. You want to whisk until it's pale. So like I said, I have my um, cocoa powder, my flour, some baking soda action um, in there. And then I'm going to bring over the rest. Yes. So this is one of those directions in recipes that always baffles people who, who don't cook. Whisk until pale, but how, what is pale? Like, how do you know when pale it's pale? Is, that's that, pale? That's pale. That's pale? Okay. There you go. Show it to the camera. This is pale. That is pale. Whisk until <laughs> pale. It basically means, I mean, in this case, it's, it's harder to tell the difference between when you start and when it's pale because there's only one egg. But oftentimes, when you start with like five eggs or something like that, the yolk gives it this really intense color. Right. Um, but as you whisk it, it mm -hmm. lightens. Yeah, as you whisk it, you're incorporating air, and the air actually, I mean, it's probably very scientific. I'm not a scientist, um, but it incorporates air, which kind of 
basically makes it look lighter. Light, lightens yeah. the hue. Yes. Do you want me to add anything else to this? Yes, so you're gonna also add um, some melted butter. Why don't you whisk all drizzle? Some melted butter here. And the reason I'm using melted butter is just so that it incorporates better because otherwise you need to use an electric mixer, whether it's a hand mixer or a um, stand mixer, in order to beat the butter with the sugar. And I wanted this right. to be, for lack of a better way of describing it, I wanted it to be one of those like, you know, stir and dump cakes, so right. it's really easy. But if the melted butter is, you don't want it too hot. Will, or will it cook the egg or will it? If no, you don't want it hot. hot. Actually, I like to, to incorporate it when it's warm just because then it prevents anything from seizing up right. at the end of the day when you add other ingredients. So for example, if you add your vanilla extract, which I'm doing now, let's say you, you pulled it out of a really cold pantry. I mean, we're only adding a teaspoon, excuse me. We're only adding a teaspoon, so it doesn't really matter. But if you add something that might be a little too cool, it might actually cause the butter to create little flecks and seize up. So we add some. Of that we're and after, then we're after smoothness. I'm gonna smooth. add the red wine. So we have actually, where's the bottle of that? Because I want you to talk about it. Yeah. So this is a Cabernet wine. I mean, it's a Cabernet cake. So we're adding literally Cabernet, Cabernet, um, but it's a whole cup. It's yeah. It's so um, I'm gonna add this. Why don't you talk about it? Um, so this is um, a Cabernet from Australia, from Barossa Valley Estate, um, classic Australian producer. Um, I like actually, you know, I like California or or Australia wines oh, um, doing it like that. in this context because it's you, you want a lot of flavor from the wine because it's yeah. going to stand up to the chocolate and the cake. Um, this is a big, fruity, intense wine. It's, it's actually a really nice bottle of wine. The other thing is like for cooking, I always say, if, don't, cook, don't cook with something you wouldn't actually drink. Um, right. You know, don't buy super, super cheap cooking wine because it's, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to give taste to the food. So you actually want to be able to, to have something in there that's palatable. Um, this is not terribly expensive. It's under 20 bucks. Um, and so using a cup of it is a little bit of money, but then you get to drink the rest of the bottle. There you which go. Is, um, which is delicious. Which is not so, a bad thing. Yeah. I don't think. I forgot salt, actually. So then you have about, I think it's either a half or a whole teaspoon of salt. I'm just going to add it now. I forgot it. Don't worry about it. It's okay. And you just want to mix this really well. So I added the wine. It was a whole cup of Cabernet mm -hmm. to the wet ingredients. And it looks really, it, I mean, it just looks chocolatey. It kind of takes on a color of like milk chocolate. Yep. Um, the, the wet ingredients prior to mixing with the dry were just kind of ugly. They looked like, it was kind of gray yeah. because of the wine, but it doesn't matter. And this is probably why a red wine cake will be chocolate as opposed to something else. But, yeah. and well, it's a funny thing. So red wine actually with chocolate itself is not a great pairing sweetness. I mean, they take a Cabernet, you pair it with, with chocolate, the sweetness in the chocolate's gonna intensify the tannins and make the wine a little more bitter than it would be normally. Right. You put it in a cake, um, you with sort of don't have to worry about all that. You just get the flavor of the fruit in the wine. And, um, and it's a... Uh, so that's why yeah, it might you pick up, well. You won't pick yeah. up the tannins in here. So I'm gonna show you one of my favorite Mad Genius tips of all time um, is how to line a round cake pan perfectly using parchment paper. It's I'm, actually very simple. I'm very excited about this because <laughs> I, I, I getting struggle with this. on it's everything. pain in the ass. I'm getting pat to on everything. Pain in the neck. Don't mean to over, you know, use the wrong language. <laughs> Food wine live. We're very genteel here. We are, except some of our guests like to use the F word sometimes, but. Um, Not me. <laughs> I'm the so wine editor. I don't do that. I've taken a square of parchment. I've folded it in half. I'm folding it in half again. And then I'm going to fold it towards the closed seam, almost like you would if you're making a paper airplane. And then you fold it again. And basically what you end up with is this triangle, you know, of parchment paper, just like that, then what you're gonna do is flip over your cake pan, put the tip of it right in the center, and then you're gonna take a pair of scissors, which I think I have here, yes. Um, and you're just going to cut it right at the edge. Okay, that's pretty cool. Just like that. Having, having as, a, as, a, as a long time struggler with how to make round parchment, I mean, literally, I, I was dealing with this the other day, and, and trying there. to like cut it into the pan, which is a giant pain in the neck. Yeah. Yeah. Or you get out a pencil and you trace it. No, this is a really, really genius idea here. So, and I actually learned this in culinary school. So, although I'm taking credit for teaching the world how to do this mad genius tip, I actually learned it in culinary school. So, um, now we just pour it right into our pan here using a little trusty rubber spatula. And this cake is, it's actually kind of a wet batter, but it's totally fine because I want it to be re a really moist cake. I think this would make a really great birthday cake for a party of adults, maybe not, you don't want to maybe have this for kids, but 
Um, spread it around, spread it around. You get the gist, pop this in the oven, bake it till it's, the toothpick comes out, and that's it. And we have one here because this is live and we don't have time to bake a cake. No, we don't. <laughs> unless, you want to, unless you want to watch us for you know, 45 minutes while we stand here and just kind of make stuff up. While exactly, we which eh, yeah, you yeah. know, some people Maybe. might want to do that, right? Possible. Um, um, how long does it cook for? I think it cooks for like 40 minutes or something okay. like that. Yeah, about 40 minutes. Right. So, um, so I have my cake here. I let it cool completely in the pan. I ran a thin knife around it to help it um, take it out. And then I'm going to invert it onto a cake plate. Hopefully it comes out. It came out. I felt it. There you go. I'll let you peel off the parchment. It's nice to have a purpose in life. <laughs> Ray, <laughs> no, you're the executive good. I mean, <laughs> wine editor of Food and Wine. You and have a purpose. I am the official cake parchment peeler. <laughs> Um, okay, so now this is what makes this cake even more special. So we're doing a red wine ganache. Cool. Chocolate ganache. So I have some chocolate here that I've combined with corn syrup and butter, and I melted over double boiler. The recipe, if you check it out, actually calls to do it in the microwave because it's just as easy. I did it here because we don't have a microwave. Um, I melted it here, and then I'm going to go ahead and add some... Um, I'm actually going to mix these two things together because it's a little easier if you warm the wine just a little bit in the microwave mm -hmm. before adding it to this so you don't seize your chocolate. But what I'm going to do is m mix it with some powdered sugar just to kind of um, dissolve it and make like a little cornstarch slurry here. Um, I mean, not cornstarch slurry, uh, a little powdered, powdered sugar slurry, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then we're going to mix that right into the melted chocolate, which should stay melted. Yeah, should stay melted. But if your chocolate, and this is, so you want your chocolate to be cooled slightly, <clears throat> but you don't want it to be um, too hot. This is actually a little too hot. And the way, the way I know that is because you can see how thin it is. Yeah. So normally, if this was like a little cooler of a temperature, then so it cooled would be. slightly, like you put your finger in it and it feels warm, but not hot. Exactly. Yeah, exactly, like room temp, right. like just barely over room temp. And the reason for that is because you want to be able to spread it on the cake. So what I'm actually going to do is, I wonder if I have another bowl here. I want to try to cool it down a little bit before I put it on the cake because I want you to mm. see how beautiful it is. Let me do this. So this is a trick I have for cooling down a ganache. So if you're doing it in a bowl and you don't have another bowl, which I do not have, you could sit that bowl, <laughs> you could sit this bowl in a bowl of, of ice water as long as you didn't let the water spill over it. Yes, it, right? totally, because water and chocolate are not friends. Yeah. Um, but so basically what I'm doing by doing this is I'm spreading out the chocolate so that the bowl kind of absorbs the heat. Yeah. You can see it's getting thicker. Yeah, you can actually see it. This is actually um, kind of n not using a bowl like this, but that's how you temper chocolate, is you pour it onto like a marble surface or something, and you use the surface that you're working on mm -hmm. as a way of controlling the, the temperature of the chocolate, and that's basically what I'm doing here. So if you're trying to thicken your ganache, and you don't have another bowl, or you don't want to use another bowl, just do this. So you can see it's getting thicker the more I do it. It's heading towards spreadability. It's heading towards spreadability. I think it's ready. It's, a, it's looking, looking yeah. delicious. I mean, it's a little, it's a little thin still because you want it, you want to be able to spread it. But I'm going to go with it anyways because, because I, I want to. Well, because <laughs> we have to, we have to actually get this done. <laughs> we do. <laughs> yeah, and normally there's, there's we, that. I don't even know what time it is. Normally we have like a little clock. Is there, are, is there anybody watching <laughs> that, who wants to ask a question? <laughs> Come on, hit us up. Q and A. Q and A. Q and A. Yeah. All right. All right. So. I'm going to punch out. I think we scared them all. I don't know. We're, people don't want to talk about chocolate cake, apparently. All right, so I'm going to pour it right on the cake. It's really shiny. Oh, that is, that is very appealing. It's really beautiful. I'm getting a phone call right now. I feel it on my Apple Watch. <laughs> Somebody's calling me. They're like, where's the cake? <laughs> We're waiting. <laughs> We're waiting on the cake. All right, so. Spread it on top, and then I like to just let it drip down the sides just a little bit. Normally, I would actually flip the cake back over because I actually like the rounded, the rounded bottom. And you just let it drip down the sides. See, if this was a little bit thicker, it would actually drip a little slower down the sides, which is what I prefer. But this is really good. So just like that. Let it drip down the sides. It's chocolatey. Yeah, and then, of excellent. course, because I can't leave well enough alone, 
Flaky salt. sea salt. Flaky sea salt on chocolate. Or caramel. You know. Or caramel. And you just put it on top. And that is it. That is my red wine chocolate cake. You can get it at foodandwine.com. You could get it in the April issue of Food and Wine. We are also linking to it in the comments if you're watching us on Facebook. Yep. All right, I everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're done. I think we're done. I think that was it. You got chocolate cake. You got pat de fui. <laughs> we got lots of pat de fui. We got cocktails. We got cocktails. <laughs> we got it all. We got it all. And Ray, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for everyone. Having me. Ray is Food and Wine's executive wine editor. He knows everything about wine. So read his column in every issue of Food and Wine Magazine. Food and Wine Yeah. Or yes. catch him. Check on out the, the April Today issue. Show. It's our wine yeah. issue. <laughs> all right. Bye, everybody. Bye. We're gonna garnish more cocktails. We're gonna with... garnish. We're gonna make. We're gonna put more pat de fui on things. <laughs> Let's put it everywhere. Put it everywhere. <laughs>